Because I fly, I laugh more than other people. I look up and see more than they. I know how the clouds feel, what it's like to have the blue in my lap, to look down on birds, to feel freedom in a thing called the stick. Who but I can slice between God's billowed legs and feel them laugh and crash with his step? Who else has seen the unclimbed peaks, the rainbow secret, the real reason birds sing? Because I fly, I envy no person on earth. Good evening and welcome to the 13th annual gala of the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame, where we award people and recognize people for doing outstanding things in the world of aviation. It is with great pleasure and honor to recognize the accomplishments of the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame inductees for 2014. Our first inductee is General Albert Boyd, and uh, to accept for him, uh, Mr. Fred Womack. So Fred, if you'll come up and just stand behind his chair for a moment while we hear about General Boyd. General Albert Boyd, United States Air Force, 1906 to 1976. Albert Boyd was born in Rankin, Tennessee in 1906. He graduated from high school at Asheville, North Carolina in 1924 and attended Biltmore Junior College. Appointed as aviation cadet in October 1927, Albert Boyd completed his flying training and was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Air Reserve on February 28, 1929. He received his regular commission as a second lieutenant of Air Corps on May 2, 1929. He was transferred to Chanute Field, Illinois in August of 1934 as engineering and operations officer and secretary of the Air Corps Technical School and served in Hawaii from 1939 to 1941. Joining the Air Service Command in February 1943, General Boyd was assistant control officer at Patterson Field and the following April became chief of the maintenance division of the Middletown Air Service Command, Middletown, Pennsylvania. Reassigned to Patterson Field in January 1944, he was named Special Assistant to the Commanding General of the Air Service Command. In 1944, General Boyd was named Chief of the Maintenance Division at Wright Field, Ohio. The following July, he was appointed Deputy Commander of the 8th Air Force Service Command. Named Acting Chief of the Flight Test Division there in October 1945, the General became Chief of the Division the following January, assuming additional duty as an experimental test pilot, retaining that position when the Air Technical Service Command was redesignated the Air Materiel Command. General Boyd assumed command of Edwards Air Force Base Air Research and Development Command in California in August of 1949. He was chiefly responsible for establishing the Flight Test Center and made the selection of Chuck Yeager as the primary X-1 pilot. He became Vice Commander of the Wright Air Development Center at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in February 1952 and assumed that command that June. His decorations include the Legion of Merit and Distinguished Flying Cross. He has rated a command pilot, set a speed record of 625 miles per hour in a shooting star, a combat observer, and aircraft with over 25,000 hours of flying time. For his extraordinary and enduring service, and his contributions to aviation for Tennessee, our nation, and the world, and for his service to our country. General Albert Boyd is honored by and inducted into the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame 
this first day of November, 2014. Mr. Walmart will come forward now. I'll present him with the medallion. And he is going to hang it over the picture here. And then he will have some comments. It is my pleasure this evening to introduce General Albert Boyd, one of the most influential aviators of his era. After World War II, in the late 40s and the early 50s, the jet airplane came of age. Factories were building engines and airframes, but someone actually had to fly the airplane Unlike today's testing, which is done by computers and simulation, test flying was a very dangerous job in those days. For example, the test flight for the first production jet fighter, the P-80, later called the F-80, resulted in six fatal crashes, among which was a leading ace from World War II. One of our nominees tonight, which you've heard about already, was one of the lucky test pilots. Not only was General Boyd a test pilot, he was also the commander of the flight test division. On June the 19th, 1947, as you heard a little bit earlier, in an F-80, he set a new world speed record of 625 miles per hour. This was very significant because it was the first time in 24 years that the United States had held the world speed record. His contribution to aviation, aviation's progress, included hundreds of improvements in military aircraft. Such was his reputation that the Air Force never bought a single type of aircraft which had not been personally approved by Boyd. Safety of flight was always foremost in his mind. He put it in practice with a new philosophy of flight safety, stressing the need for placing an engineering scientist in the cockpit during these flights. He was responsible for establishment of the test pilot school and for its transfer to Edwards Air Force Base in California, where he served as commander. In 1951, he personally tested most of the X-Series experimental aircraft. At the speeds of the test aircraft of those days were approaching the speed of sound barrier, the concern was that no one could really predict what would happen once the barrier was crossed. It would be Boyd's decision, all by himself, this awesome decision, to name a pilot who would make that attempt. You all know the rest of the story. It was Chuck Yeager went through the speed of sound in 1947. During the Korean War, our government offered $100,000 to any North Korean pilot who would be willing to fly a MiG-15 out of North Korea. The chief of staff of the Air Force immediately called Boyd, asking him to go to Okinawa to determine what capabilities that airplane were. Again, he selected Chuck Yeager, his favorite test pilot, and another test pilot to Okinawa. Now, the awesome job that they had was taking an airplane they knew nothing about, they didn't have any engineering data on it, and for flight throughout its complete envelope. Well, General Boyd always flew chase for these, these experiments. They would take the MiG up to like 50,000 feet, point it straight to the ground, and to see what would happen. Because they had had a lot of MiGs lost in combat just going out of control. 
So you can see what a dangerous job that was. Uh, but Boyd flew a chafe, chase airplane in an F-86 as they were doing through these dive tests and many other parts of the test also. So you can see what he said, that that job <clears throat> with a MiG-15 was probably the most dangerous job that he and Chuck Eager had had in all their testing career. He held numerous command positions during his outstanding career. He had accumulated well over, I believe the movie said, 25,000 hours of pilot in command time. If you think about that, we have a lot of pilots today flying over 25,000 hours, but they're airline pilots and this type. But his type of flying was taking off and landing and taking off and landing. So it was an awesome feat. He'd flown more than 723 types of military aircraft. At the time of his retirement in 1957, he had flown every aircraft in the United States Air Force inventory, including attack, cargo, trainer, fighter, experimental aircraft, liaisons, observation, and even some general aviation aircraft and helicopters. It is believed his flying experience is unequaled in the world back then and maybe even today. Albert Borden was born in Rankin, Tennessee, and that's up on the French Broad River in Cock County in the eastern part of Tennessee. He was born in 1906. I understand the rumor has it there's a bridge up there close to Rankin that's named the Boyd Bridge. And the reason it was named the Boyd Bridge is because he flew under that bridge at one time, I think when he was a young man anyway. He died in 1976 and is buried in the Arlington National Cemetery. I would like to finish what I have to say today by reading an editorial that came out in the Asheville Citizen newspaper at Boyd's death. And I will quote, said of men like him, they made man flight more than a dream of the visionaries. They made the world a smaller place. Without their courage, the dreams and designs of the Wright brothers and Glenn L. Martin would have been long time coming. It was not merely a physical courage these men possessed to an extraordinary degree. They also had a moral courage to, to convince a physical and a military leadership wedded in the horse and buggy philosophy that aviation would change the world. And it has. I believe that General Boyd would have considered the ultimate compliment to be called the test pilot's test pilot. And that was one of the things that they coined him and many other things that they called him. But he was so much more. He was one of those individuals who truly helped change the world. Thank you.